Hi, I'm Jason Nim, and I have to read comic books. That's why on the week of September 3rd, I decided to read all the DC New 52 comic books that were published in the world. I'm going to give each of these a buy it, borrow it from a friend, or a skip it rating. But before I get to that, don't forget to go to Majorspoilers.com, the comic book website where they know that you love comic books, and we do too. Now enough of this jibba jabba, let's get on to some Futures in. go five years later, and get to some reviews. Action Comics Futures in number one. So five years into the future, Superman is hanging out in Ethiopia, he's got a beard, and he's trying to plant plants in the Sahara Desert. Not gonna really work, Superman. Uh, besides that, it's just him being all mopey that he shouldn't be Superman, he's failed, and then there's a dust creature who's flying around who can give everybody, like, dust powers. And there's no real explanation or connection for why this dust creature can give Superman's powers away. So dust creature and Superman have a small little conversation, but there is no connective through line in this issue. It's a really random one shot with a really random storyline, so this is a big skip it. Aquaman, Futures in number one. Dan Jurgens gives us a quick tale of Aquaman in a really kick ass costume like seriously look at this costume this costume should be his normal costume it's a very modernized take very sleek and slimming take apparently there's been a war five years later uh, between Atlantis and the surface people and Arthur's trying to build an island that can help the refugees he goes to Atlantis apparently Mara's like I don't want you here anymore Aquaman and here's my ice king husband that you didn't know about and they attack him now there is some intriguing ideas here but the problem with this being a futures in one shot is that we have no no idea of some of the context of these situations, so we lose a lot of the drama. But apparently this is going to be continued in Aquaman and the others. So if you want to know more about the storyline, continue, but otherwise skip it. Batman Eternal number 22. Batman Eternal is a solid issue this week. Last week I talked about how Batman Eternal finally turned around the corner, and this issue continues that trend. As Batman heads to uh, Wayne Tower, Gotham Tower, I'm not certain about the name, to fight off the architect while Julia Pennyworth, Alfred Pennyworth's daughter, has to back him up. And at first she's very reluctant, and she doesn't wanna, she doesn't wanna help him, and Batman's punching thugs, he's like, I need help, come on, Julia. And uh, she's like, I'm not gonna help you, give me. And he's like, oh God, I'm getting punched in the face a lot. Help me out, Julia. And finally she gives in, helps him out a lot. He gives her a nickname, Pennyworth too, and uh, 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 Pennywise too, I apologize. And it's a nice, because it, it's a solid action scene with solid drama with character moments mixed in. You know what? This makes it two in a row that Batman Eternal has been great. So this is a buy it. Batwing Futures in number one. It's a crazy book when it starts out where Batwing doesn't even look like Batwing and he's in charge of Leviathan. Yep, the bad group that was ran by Talia al Ghul and Batman Inc., well, they're back and Batwing's in charge. Or are they when we get halfway through the issue and it flips on their head and you find out the whole thing's a double cross by Batman Inc. And I love it because I love Batman Inc. And that's why this is one of the most fun issues of Future's End I've read so far. One of the, the, the tie-ins anyway. This is a buy it. Detective Comics Futures End number one. This, out of all the other Futures Ends, really could have been an Elseworlds back in the day. If you don't remember what an Elseworlds is, an Elseworlds is a DC comic book title that sort of took situations and our heroes and put them in different situations. So you got like, what was Superman like during the Revolutionary War? What if Superboy had been a girl? What if the Earth is dead and the Flash is in a wheelchair and he's got a monkey as a sidekick? What would that be like? And that's kind of what the Elseworlds were. Some of them were really great, some of them were really bad. This issue really feels like you could have just put Elseworlds on the title and you could have done it. And actually, you know what, DC? Let's put this this crazy idea out there. Next year, your September event should just be Elseworlds. Make it Elseworlds. Just do straight up Elseworlds. Who cares? We don't need to tie in anything. Anyways, Batman needs to get to Arkham Island. Arkham is now an island. He's got a brand new kick-ass costume, which really looks, looks really sweet, actually, because Calendar Man has taken over Arkham Island, and the defenses were built by the Riddler. So Batman gets the Riddler to come with him to Arkham Island. He gets to Arkham Island, and he double-crosses the Riddler, leaving him to be killed by the calendar man. And Batman doesn't care. So we're left to wonder like, what happened here? What happened? Oh, and there's a lot of great character moments, a lot of great art. The only downside of this issue is halfway through the issue, the art completely shifts. So at the beginning, we get a really good uh, Brian Buccioletto style. And at the end, it kind of looks like somebody's trying to draw the Val Kilmer movie. It's kind of weird. It doesn't really really work. The beginning of the issue's art is great. Second half, not so good. But you know what? The story's strong, so buy it. Earth 2 features in number one. It is a crazy tale of three Terry Sloans all fighting each other with the only good 
idea in this book being that you can buy goggles that can tell what Earth of the multiverse you're from. It's a very intriguing idea, but it's not strong enough to carry the entire book because this book makes no sense and is crazy. Skip it. And now a very quick scheduled interruption. I want to give a shout out and a thank you to Chad Neary for donating to my Patreon. Thanks a lot, Chad. And if you want a shout out like this in a future episode of Jason Reads Comics, go to patreon.com slash jawin and uh, donate at the appropriate level. And now back to the show. Grayson, Futures in number one. Initially, the pages of this book are bonkers crazy. We are, Dick's working for Russia. Helen is there. We don't get what's going on. But as you turn the pages, each page jumps earlier and earlier and earlier in time. Eventually, to the point where we get to see Dick back as Nightwing and we just see Dick as Robin putting the costume all the way back to Zuko uh, putting acid on the ropes of the Flying Graysons. And it's this where this Tom King really showed how to use this five years later format and tell a very convincing story. We get hints to the future, we get hints to the past, and it's a great exercise. This is a buy it. Green Arrow features in number one. This is how you do a tie-in issue. This issue directly ties into the New 52 features in, and it ties into the whole five years later event. Basically, we get to learn who killed Green Arrow in this future uh, storyline. We learn that, spoilers, it's Deathstroke. But the way it happens and the art and the way it ties into the main storyline of the book while tying into the five years later time at the same time makes this an amazing issue if you've been reading Green Arrow. And it makes it, it gives a little snippets to Future's End, but mainly Green Arrow. This is a great book, and I wish that Future's End could be like every issue of this book. This is a buy it. Green Lantern, Future's End number one. Yuck. So we get Martin Jordan, who has never been resurrected in any other part of Green Lantern, coming back as a Green Lantern, basically for five pages, explaining to Hal Jordan in his underwear why he needs to fight Krona, because Krona's raising a Black Lantern army and creating Blackest Night too. And what does Hal Jordan do? He's like, boy, I'm gonna go team up with my this old enemy who's never been friends with me, and he teams up with Relic. Yep the villain of Lights Out, who's somehow out of the source wall. Why? We don't know. And Hal Jordan doesn't seem any different five years later than he does now. It literally makes no sense. If you like character plots where characters do things that make no sense, then you'll love this book. Otherwise, for normal people, skip it. Justice League number 33. So Lex Luthor finally joins the Justice League and Batman defuses the situation, not with his punches, but with his brains. You need to buy this book already. The art's amazing and the story's great. Buy it! Swamp Thing features in number one. This is a great way to tell a one one-shot condensed story. Charles Soule, obviously, when he was thinking about writing this book, obviously was like, how can I tell the final story of Swamp Thing? It's great. You get to see Swamp Thing interact with all the avatars of the different elements, and then eventually take on the rot with a secret weapon that blew me away and made me cheer when I saw it, a white lantern ring. This issue, great art, great moments, and definitely proves that Charles Soule, when he moves to Marvel, is going to be missed on this book. This is a buy it. The New 52 features in number 18. Man, why can't every page of this book be about Green Arrow? Because the Green Arrow storyline, which I think is being written by Jeff Lemire, writer of the Green Arrow's uh, main book, is fantastic. It is great. It's compelling. I like it. I'm there. I'm in. And then everything else, I'm just like, I don't care. I don't care that bearded Superman and Constantine are complaining. That Con Why would Constantine be the one telling Superman to come back? Doesn't make sense. And then Deathstroke's just like, you know, we'll chill out in this cave because I'm Deathstroke. Let's do this thing. Yeah. And, and, and then Cadmus Island, I just don't care. If this book focused on Green Arrow, this would be a badass book in the future. A badass alternate tale with Green Arrow, and I'd be in every issue. But since it's not, it's a skip it. Do you like seeing a deity represented as a dog and a lot of veiled Christian references? No? Then skip this book! And that's it for all the DC titles that are published on September 3rd. As always, they go to Majorspoilers.com, a very cool comic book website where they know that you love comic books, and they do too. Lots of great editorials, lots of great articles. As always, you can go listen to my podcast, Geek History Lesson, at Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson and GeekHistoryLesson.tumblr.com. We take one character every week, and we divulge its secrets. And if you want to support this show and other great shows like and Get Your Name Shouted Out and Jason reads comics, go to patreon.com slash jawin. Even a dollar will get you something really cool and a really cool shout out from me. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think, what you hate, what you don't like, what you, if you like these issues before. If you know what exactly this issue in the back wall is, this one right here, can you name it in the comments? I want to see you do it. Thanks again to all of you who watch and uh, like these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll be seeing you next week. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Sit pretty. There we go. Good girl. Wait.
with